Good morning, everybody. Welcome back to London. This is the end of month one, of my Italian project. Now, in the last week, there is, to be honest, not much new to report. I have been just really having a great time with all this uh, amazing content that I found. And if you've been watching the series up to this point, then you'll know what I'm talking about. I've been doing two things, basically, this last week. Number one, uh, reading every morning, which has been really, really useful. I've been just reading mostly on my iPad, on, on the Kindle app, with a couple of great books that I found. Uh, and then for the rest of the day, I've been going out uh, and I've been listening to cool podcasts in Italian while well, I'm at the gym, when I'm on the train. It's really been a lot of fun, but not much new to report. So what I thought I would do this week uh, is to answer your questions. I put a call out for questions on Twitter, in my Facebook group, on in the YouTube community. Uh, and I've got some really great questions coming through. So I'm going to answer all of those one by one in this video. Enjoy. And then don't forget next week is the proof of the pudding. Next week, you're going to get a compilation video of me speaking for five days in a row. But don't worry, you don't have to sit and there, sit and watch me speak for five days. Uh, I'll cut it down to like one or two minutes per day so you can see, get an idea of the progression over the course of the week. I am really looking forward to it. Uh, I hope you are too. So here's the Q&A and I'll see you back next week for the big day. All right, so here we are in the office in my uh, soundproofed boudoir. Got a huge list of questions and some really great ones, some absolute crackers in here. So um, I, I really want to get through as many of these as possible. So I'm going to move through them fairly quickly in an effort to answer everybody's questions. Um, so let's get started. Chanel and Daff ask a similar question, which is how has your how have your other languages that you know bled into your Italian? Have they helped or hindered? Okay, um, so very common question this one. Obviously, they've helped. So, I mean, especially in comprehension. I mean, the fact that that that, that Spanish and Italian, in particular, are so similar, but also there's lots of French that that. that bleeds into Italian as well. In terms of comprehension, that has helped enormously from the start. But I think uh, that is, it's been a good leg up, if you like, but that is going to do a full circle when I start to speak um, next week, because as I've already discovered, uh, because actually, as I'm recording this, I've already had my first speaking session, because I'm recording these a week uh, in arrears. So uh, I actually <laughs> gonna have an answer to this already. So, I mean, while the, my knowledge of Romance languages has certainly helped comprehension and probably allowed me to move a little bit faster in this early phase, the, a lot of what's, gonna, what's coming up in month two is actually going to be rewiring my brain to speak Italian rather than Spanish. Because while there are words that are identical between the two languages, there are plenty of words which are similar. And it's those words that are similar where you've got to be careful because that's where Spanish can come out of your mouth and um, and, but, it, but that's, that can't happen. I want to be judged in this project by my ability to actually speak real Italian, not just kind of span out Spanian, whatever that fusion term is between Spanish and Italian. So you know, that means using vocabulary like parola rather than palabra. Uh, you know, that stuff matters. The detail matters, uh, at least for me in this project. Saul asks, is this method more effective than the previous methods you've tried? What are your thoughts on this method at the moment? Yeah, well, it's early days. Obviously, I'm one month in. I think, the, I mean, the thing for me really is that I have never done this before. It's very different for me. I've always been a kind of speaking first kind of guy because that's what I most want to do is, is speaking. That's what really mo motivates me. It's unusual that I feel like I've got the the mindset to actually spend a month doing no speaking, just listening and reading, you know. Uh, but it's really striking how much I know I can already say and speak in Italian through, you know, by virtue of simply having had an absolute ton of input over, over the last month. You know, I was talking to someone earlier today about Japan. This guy was in Japan and we were chatting about this and, and um, I was, commenting that you know a lot of what I did was in, in Japan was kind of more focused study as it were and partly that's because I, I, I didn't have any interesting but couldn't find any interesting material for you know lower levels beginners in Japanese it's really hard it's still a problem to this day which I'm working on solving but won't go into that now um, so it's partly a material issue but it's also the fact that it never occurred to me to just spend tons and tons of time on input 
Like there's, there isn't a clear line you can draw to connect those two dots, you know, from, 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 okay, spend a ton of time, don't study, spend, just listen and read, to, and you will speak well. Like those are not, those are, those are not obvious dots to someone who's kind of coming at this new. So, um, you know, I, I am very happy with what's happened over the last month through no particular effort of my own, I have to say. I mean, what, all I've really been trying to do is just get a lot of that, uh, just work hard. I mean, do a lot of listening and reading. That's been the hardest thing. And um, there's a question on that a bit later on. So, Fit asks, and Michael also asks, how much of the content that you're reading and listening to do you understand as a beginner? Yes, yeah, so, I mean, um, I've progressed over the course of this month from using very basic material, the, the, you know, the link mini stories, which are designed with very, very short stories for complete beginners, all the way through to now spending most of my time listening to authentic podcasts, uh, uh, Italian podcasts for Italians. And that's what I'm spending most of my time doing now. So there's been a really a, a huge um, transition and I, I feel like a lot of progress. And a lot of that has just, I mean, you know, it, I, I'm not sure what the stats are, but it's like 60 or 70 hours I've spent listening to Italian and more besides probably that I haven't managed to track. So, uh, you know, I, I understand a lot, I have to say, not everything, but you see, part of what happens when you focus on this input-based method is you can't hold yourself to the standard of needing to understand everything. This is one of the things about textbook or traditional approaches is that, you know, when you don't understand something, you stop and you study it. But then as soon as you do that, you never, you just can't make any progress through the challenge. You can't, you know, it, all the time you stop this is why I haven't done any grammar study at all because for every hour that I spend you know studying a grammar point or conjugations of a verb I could be spending that hour getting more input so almost everything that you anything else you can do is at the expense of, of, of input and the real prize that's up for grabs you know or or so the theory goes is to spend an entire month getting that input, those three, two, three hours a day of input. Like the, the prize that's up for grabs is, it comes from the, the sheer force of having studied that much content. So I think a lot, of, a lot will become clearer next week after I complete my week of speaking. But for now, yeah, I understand a lot. It does depend on the type of content. So some, I listened to a political podcast the other day, didn't understand anything. But the podcasts I've been listening to, which are those that I enjoy, I understand a lot and I can follow a lot. Um, Michael also asks, have you regretted not going through some of the basics? No, nope, not for a second, because anything that is not clear when I come to speak, I can study then. I'd much rather, um, you know, normally they, they say prevention is better than cure, right? But in this time, I think cure is better than prevention. I'd much rather spend all my time on input, just letting my brain soak stuff up. And then when stuff becomes a problem later, then fix it. One of my golden rules of language learning is don't spend any time studying that which you can learn naturally through other means. So Clayton asks, is it becoming easier over time to put in the, the study time or harder? Good question. You know, if you'd asked me this a couple of weeks ago, I would have said harder because I think I was exhausting the beginner content that I'd found. And I, was, I, needed, I needed that bridge, you know, to get to a kind of higher level. This is flashing over here. Um, whilst also, whilst remaining uh, interesting, right? Um, How's that? But I think since I've found this really compelling content that I, that I really enjoy, you know, these, these podcasts that are basically intended, or well, they're native speaker, the podcasts in Italian for Italians, now that I've married up that, um, that, that, that interest with the appropriate level of challenge, like now I've managed to successfully, uh, which for me is a huge achievement, I've even managed to get into the frame of mind where I, I don't listen to my English, my favorite English podcasts anymore. I just listen to Italian podcasts because they're interesting and they're on topics that I like. And I've put all of these in, in, in the resource page, by the way, you can find a link um, below if you want to see the resources I've been using. So now it's just, it's becoming more and more of a pleasure really in every sense. Now, Charlotte asks an interesting question. What if you only had the amount of time daily to learn like the average person does? Sometimes lucky to have 10 or 15 minutes. What would your strategy be and how far would you be? All right, now, I want to make the point quite clearly that the vast majority of my time has not been sitting down studying. It's been using my dead time. So 
in the gym, walking down the street, uh, over lunch, uh, commuting to work. These periods of time are absolutely vital and I wouldn't be able to do, I wouldn't have the, you know, the motivation really to just sit down at my desk for three hours a day and, and study. It, I think it's a common misconception that we only have say 10, 15 minutes a day free. And, 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 I, and I do know what it's like to have you know, a, a, busy, a busy life, you know, with, with you know, you've got, you've, got, you've got work, you've got family, you've got other hobbies and interests. And, you know, I know what it's like. But for most people, you know, if you go to the gym, if you walk, if you have a lunch break, if you commute to work, I think that it's very, very likely that most people can, can put together a significant amount of time during the day. And you know, if, even if all of that only adds up to say an hour, which I think anybody can find, then you know, that is then moving into the territory where you can really make some progress. An hour a day is, is fantastic. I've been doing more because I'm kind of just, I'm always like that, I'm kind of all or nothing. But you know, you've got to look for those periods of dead time in order to, to bump up your, uh, your, your overall study. Pam says, this is a very interesting question. You're using your own resources, your short storybooks, your conversations material. How would you evaluate them now that you're approaching them from a different perspective? Right, so I love this question, Pam. So this is, uh, obviously, we're talking about materials that I have written for learners, obviously on the premise that learners are gonna like them. But now I'm in the position of being a learner, using my own materials, how am I finding them? Uh, I mean, I have to say, I've been, they, I, I've really, really enjoyed using them and they've been extraordinarily helpful. Um, now of course, I would say that. So you're going to have to take that for, uh, on faith, I guess. But really, the fact that everything I've been doing recently has been based on story. I mean, I've been doing that for a reason. And it's not only because it works really, really well for me, but it's because I just see more and more how, how people, how students react to that whether that's in my uncovered courses or with conversations and I mean I've known that beyond a doubt for quite some time given mostly kind of given student feedback in general but I think the thing the thing about these resources is I have created them and written them with help obviously but but it, it has been a real pleasure to go through them from the student perspective because the stories are strong and it all comes down to the story especially with conversations like you know which is it's all dialogue based it's all telling a kind of interesting story soap opera style story and i want to know what happened i already know what happens but i want to follow it through and i'm enjoying the the, the kind of colloquial content so um I, I guess the one thing that I have thought is that for conversations, I think for the uh, at least I have the things I have to see this through the lens of my own study, which is the ca the caveat. But I found the conversations themselves slightly on the short side. For me personally, I would have liked them to be longer, but that I think is probably because I've kind of come at this from a background of having romance languages already. So my, my level of comprehension is higher and I need more of a challenge, um, which is why I think I've moved past them quite quickly. I mean, I, you know, I've been listening to podcasts, an hour long podcasts in Italian for native speakers. Like that's the level I'm kind of pushing myself at, whereas conversations is designed to kind of bridge the intermediate gap, you know. So I think that was the thing that probably stopped me enjoying conversations more than I would have done anyway. I mean, I, I did really enjoy using it, but I went through it so quickly that, um, it was of limited use for me, I think. Uh, although, you know, it was a great way to spend a week. In week two, I think it was. Uh, all right then, so, Neil asks, with using Link, did you rely mostly on existing content or did you spend the time to upload other content that's interested you? Yeah, so basically, Neil, for the, the, the content where I've had audio and text available, I've used Link. So my short storybooks, conversations, um, stuff from Italiano Automatico, Podcast Italiano, all this stuff, I've imported it into Link. The Veleno series uh, that I really loved, the, the, the podcast serial, I, imp I imported all of that into Link. Uh, that's mostly because I'm trying to organize all my learning around Link in order to track the stats. So uh, that's been very, very useful. 
but also the, the fact that you know it just helps helps you keep this ongoing record of the vocabulary you've um, you've used. But having said that, I think since now I, I've kind of transitioned much more to to native content where there's no transcript. The utility of Link for that in particular has been has been a little bit less. That's for audio, but for text, I've been using Link day in day out. So what I've been doing is reading these blogs that I like, especially the Efficace Mente blog, and I've just been importing article after article into Link, and I just use it as I store them on the app and use it as daily reading and it's with you know instant translations. So very very helpful. Lastly, Linda asks, when you start a new language, how do you know where to find good material that won't just frustrate you? Yeah, common question, Linda. So look at the beginning you've got to grin and bear it a little bit. You know, you've got to just get the basics into your head. So I, the attitude I would take at the very beginning is to say, right, okay, the, for the first few weeks, the stuff that I study is not going to be very interesting. It's not going to have me, it's not going to be a page turner, but I'm prepared to put up with that for a short time uh, in service of all the learning that's going to be taking place. I think you, that's just an inevitable part. So I would just kind of suck it up and try to, do as much of it as I can so I can progress onto the, the things that are more compelling and written for enjoyment. Um, and, and that's where you can start to just, you know, you use material that is, that is going to be more engaging for you. I think that's an inevitable part of, of um, learning a new language at the beginning. All right then. So lots of stuff there. Please check out the links in the description below. You're going to find the link, a list of all the materials I've been referring to and I've been using in my study. If you want extra stuff, tips, ideas, resources that I'm only sharing with Italian learners, please sign up to my Italian only email list. Again, you'll find a link to that in the description. Uh, that will I'll send you extra stuff through there that will be very useful for you if you're learning Italian. And lastly, don't forget to subscribe to the channel for more just like this because next week is coming my very first conversation in Italian. You're going to get five days of conversations. Um, couple a short chunk from each one so you can see my progress over the course of the week that will be really how we're going to judge the success of this first month of a uh, massive massive input and where i can start to enjoy myself a little bit more i've been enjoying myself but i'm really looking i am really looking forward to speaking i've got to say it <laughs> all right then ciao ragazzi